we picked it up. That's a classic. <laughs> and they have asked me, 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 to join them for their weekly lunch, and I have wanted to be a part of this group. Yeah. Spud guns, it is I, Artist Blood, the ghoul next door, and the huntress Lee the Shade. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I, <clears throat> so we just watched Picard, uh, Star Trek Picard episode four, and then we were watching some drag queens because I, I, I absolutely <laughs> love, love, love. Trixie Mattel and Katya, and so I'm still laughing. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out, but <laughs> it is pretty funny. How could you not love it? Though? I know we're getting off topic. <laughs> we'll come back to this. So okay. so that episode, yeah, wow. Picard episode four. So in this episode, we're introduced to yet another new character, the little boy who grows up. Um, he's he's a Romulan. Yeah. Um, raised by an elite fighting nun group, where he is He's raised in a coven. Yes, he is not a part of the group because he is not female, but he is trained. trained so yeah. it, it, that really made me think of Dune, the movie Dune um, from the what 80s. nineteen yeah nineteen eighty one nineteen eighty two, yeah. which Patrick Stewart yep, was, in, was well. in as well. But that that was first thing that came to my mind was uh, that element from that movie where the nuns train the, the lead character to, to be this, you know, what would end up, I guess, becoming the same equivalent of the Star Trek or Star Wars Jedis. Yes, like an elite fighting group. Yeah. Um, and I guess he had wronged this Romulan settlement um, he didn't wrong, wrong them. them. He didn't wrong them. But he, he did he fight promised, for them. Yeah, he made a promise that he couldn't keep. So they took it as a uh, personal vendetta. Yeah. Yeah. And the the so years later, the boy's all grown up, and he's a sword fighting ninja warrior type guy. And, and he uh, was very hurt by it. Um, he still ended up taking. Picard's cause, um, after, I guess, because it was a lost cause. Yeah, because it was a lost cause, and that <laughs> that. Um, so he's basically yeah. uh, Picard's security guard now. Yeah, and we were introduced at the last second. Spoilers! 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 <laughs> seven, seven of nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> we knew she was coming into the show yeah. because she's been in the trailer and all that, but we finally got to the episode where Seven of Nine appears. Um, I think it would have been cute though if they had waited till episode seven to bring seven. Up, but uh, she appears at the end of, of episode four and then passes out. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a, a Vulcan ship. It could have been a Vulcan ship, um, and then she just appears. Maybe they played it like that to to Hard give to the say. suspense. Um. The one of the the main storylines, then also that was actually the main storyline was was the the nuns and and the warrior and all that. But the um, back on the cube, we the, um, synthetic and the the guy I'm calling Frankenstein because he uh, played. Yeah. Um, we don't even know if he's Romulan. Or I I don't think he is. I am going on record yeah. saying I think it, it is a case of he was alter his. The features were altered so that he could go deep, 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 deep undercover yeah. and and infiltrate um, the Romulan spy ring. The Tel Shihar. Whatever it's called. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> because he's too joyful. He's, he's too, too emotional. loving. Yeah. He's, he's too quick to, well, in this episode, he's sliding down the hallway risky business style. Yeah. Um, in his socked feet, uh, so it's like there's just he's too playful. It it could just be a way to get to her as well, um, but I don't think so. I don't I, think so. No, no. no. 
Um, but it, it's more, it's becoming more and more apparent that she does not realize who she is and he's trying to trigger her. He but kept, not fully. He kept making yeah. little nudges and little comments in today's episode where he's trying to get her to realize that she's not who she is. Human. Yeah. But not pushing her over the edge where she kills everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he wants a tool. And his sister... <laughs> quote unquote, um, which is okay. Go on. Is strangling him to be? Yeah, to, to she get... she was beating the crap out of him, yeah. and that brings me back to the to the idea of him not really being a really a blood Romulan relation. They're not yeah. they're not blood related. I'm I'm saying this is me. This is my theory, fan theory here that it's not a blood related brother and sister. That it's uh, he's adopted or she's adopted or something. Um, because there's just too much incestuous, or they're just a part of the same group, which we we do gather that, but um, it could be brothers and sisters, it, like to this group. It, the, yeah, yeah. The, the the kind of like brothers and sisters, uh, blah, 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 of the congregation, that kind of. Eh, it could be, yeah, it could be, but I think yeah. it's gonna. I I I think the storyline's gonna go where he was, quote unquote, adopted. I do a lot of air quotes, <laughs> quote unquote, adopted. And that um, I, I'm sticking to my theory that, my fan theory, that he is a deep, 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 deep yeah. undercover. Um, I can't remember. Because um, he kind of seems Starfleet to me. Not, he doesn't he, seem Vulcan. He doesn't seem Romulan. We know he's got something, some backstory with the Michelle Hurd character of Rafi, Rafi. And also the um, long doctor, the Allison Pill character. He's got some sort of history with both of them, which again, I, I just, I say he's deep undercover. And they did that with the, the other show with um, Star Trek um, Discovery. I have not seen that, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. you know what? We should sit down one day and binge it because, yeah. Um, I haven't put it on. Anything. No, it's on Crate. Yeah. It is on Crate. Um, but they did that on the other sh other show, the first season and a half, with the Klingon. They had they had a main Klingon character who had his features altered to to go deep undercover in the human Starfleet. So I think this is what they're doing again. They have done it in the past too, um, in Next Generations. I that there's been like little little side stories in okay. where they do it. But I'm, so, I'm still on season one. <laughs> um, uh, but I know it was the um, Kim Cattrall's character in I think it was Search for Spock. Was it Search for Spock or was it Part Four, um, where her character was a Romulan posing as a Vulcan? Yes. So yeah. it has been done, but I don't think to this extent. No. So back to the to the episode. Um, last week in episode three, we were introduced to the um, pilot. No, the 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 deborged the deborged the one who was crazy. She was deborged and she was doing oh, that. the Romulan. Um, yeah. So we brought they brought her back for and she tried to kill herself. Um, in in this in this episode in episode four, she was a hologram um, video recording before the yes. Yeah. Before she had ever be, become Borg, and she was talking about she was a professor or something, and she was talking uh, about a theory. There was so much um, like the destroyer, annihilator. There was <laughs> I couldn't keep up with it. I was trying to rewind, and she's getting pissed off at no, me because no, I'm no. rewinding. I was rewinding. <laughs> I didn't understand trying, it all either. Trying to read the subtitles. The subtitles. I love subtitles. It's great, but it's like sometimes they just go too fast, and you're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> you missed some of it. Um, this is but she. I think she was on a quest to find these um, synthetics um, before she was turned into a cyborg, and we haven't quite figured out how they went. Oh, only the Romulans went mad. Yeah, that, that is some sort of weird and it something something going definitely on. Definitely seems like it's part of the story. On yeah, why. that it's gonna yeah. there's gonna end up being some sort of brain something or or DNA something that caused that. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> and we're introduced to yet another hologram crew member played by the same actor who's playing the pilot. Um, um, different accent, different hair, same, yeah. same person, but I guess that maybe um, it's the way he did it, where it was all to be it's, him, it's, but different. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, yeah. Um, once you kind of, like, I know I was kind of complaining about that from the other episode, and I was like, eh, I couldn't tell if it was the same actor. Well, I it is the same actor, and now they're doing it on purpose. It's like, oh, okay. I don't know what I he would it. be called. Um, the the weapons specialist, or the, um, the uh, gunner? I don't know, but it um, sounded like he was talking French. Uh, Spanish? Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Um, he was funny. And they seemed to have a chemistry, but the, um... It's, it's not the, that the first one was a little standoffish. I was going to say, it's not that yeah. difficult to have uh, chemistry with yourself. So this is four characters now. So he's playing, it's the pilot, it's the hologram doctor, the hologram um, um, hospitality um, agent, yeah. and the hologram weapons or navigator yeah. or whatever it was. Um, and and they're all different. It's so weird. <laughs> and the, the, the weird little tidbit of the week Throw throwaway um, tidbit was the uh, the book Three Musketeers. I think that's going to come into play later on. It might not. I, I think that's I, why I, the little boy became a fighter. Um, not only because, because he was left there with the nuns. That um, I think that Picard inspired him to be this fighter, and and now it's come together where they're together again. Yeah, it was, it, and you saw it come a mile away. Yeah. He he went there looking for help, and the boy shows up, and his big regret was that he had made a promise when the boy was like nine, ten years old, to help him find a new place to live. That the nuns were only a temporary situation, yeah. but and then things happened, and he never, yeah, he they never found a home for him. So it seems like when he quit Starfleet because of the. Romulan situation and the um, Mars attack that all, all his ongoing um, Wounds was, were, was was stopped. Yeah. Like it, it just stopped and there's nothing he could do about it, which is understandable. And he tried to... But make everyone's amends. blaming him. But everyone's blaming him. Yeah. Um, so then the, the boy all grown up, it, he kind of papoos him and, and yells at him and he's very bitter about it and very understandable. Yeah. But then at the end, he comes to, to Picard's rescue and beheads a guy <laughs> in, in town square. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, let's see, this is the first, it didn't even kind of register in my brain. This is the first Star Trek to really throw the F-bombs around. Yeah, a lot of swearing. Well, not a lot, but they're, they're throwing and, well, There's around. a couple per episode. Yeah. Um, the... Um, Discovery had a few here and there, but but not every yeah. single episode and, the way yeah. this is. And uh, a lot of it's coming from the pilot, the captain of the ship, <laughs> which yeah. is it and it seems just like his um, thrown out, thrown out yeah. there. It's just you know, and it kind of it's it's okay. It's not done in in a stupid way. It's tasteful. I yeah. Guess. Um, compare it to another CBS Access show because this is what this is. Um, the good fight, which is about a bunch of lawyers and that, it it has a lot of of f this and f that and f this. And the first time or or two, it was okay, but and then it just gets it's overbearing. Just, yeah, yeah, it's like when every single character is the third or fourth word they're saying is f this, f that. It loses its punch, yeah. and you just kind of roll your eyes um, and go ugh. Those words were meant for effect, and yeah, the way they're, that they're, they're being, using them in this series is They're is using them very you. sparingly and in the right place. It's like, my mom would say, you know, Eddie Murphy movies, they don't have to do much writing. All they have to do is put in F this, F that. And, and I, I kind of, I'm at that age where I would like to hear dialogue. I don't want to hear... Yeah. Constantly. All <laughs> Says the time. a woman who who only like two or three years ago stopped talking like that herself. Um, I still do. <laughs> I, do I do, but not yeah, to the not extent. Yeah. You know, you kind of get to an age where you're like, oh, I actually have to prove I can speak. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm wondering how the sensors are, are for, for kids that are watching this. Um, well, CBS probably. Because it, no. it, it, I don't think it actually airs on the CBS television station. I think but the sci-fi. But I think it airs on the, uh, just, just on CBS Access in the States. I'm not completely sure. Um, I don't know, because we're in Canada. Because Star Trek is usually family-friendly. It always has been. And I think they wanted to keep it that way, but maybe they do. They're the trying to find a new audience, too. Yeah. You know? And with it being... And keeping the old audience. Yeah, and with it being on all access, they can do whatever they want. That's that's the thing. It's like... I just hope they don't go too far with it. I hope... I, I, as much as... as um, there hasn't been a lot of blood and guts, which, which is, is good. Yes. Which is good. Um, uh, it's it's if they get too stupid, <laughs> I keep coming back to that word. I I'm not the one for a lot of of shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up, shoot 'em up. I hate that. There, there's there's a good balance between the story, the violence, and if the violence is overpowering the story, it's it's just a western. Yeah. Like it's, and no, sometimes not even a good one. No, no, no. <laughs> like the spaghettis. <laughs> and um, so I like the way that this season of Picard is progressing. You know, you you're getting a nice chunk of information per episode that's relevant to the overall story arc. Um, they're they're keeping it kind of a nuclear of five or six characters every episode a very small cast and i think it's meant to be like that because it is such a um a small mission but it's such a an important mission that if they have too many characters then they're going to lose focus on the story which they shouldn't because this is supposed to be a big story especially for captain picard yeah yeah um and there's really only two side stories you got Picard's main story, and then what's happening over on the cube, and everything else is kind of like intertwined. Yeah, um, and memories, the, lots of memories, which are good because you want to know where those, um, why it's leading up to this. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I would. I have one little complaint though. I would like a little more of a definition between what was supposed to be the memories, the flashbacks, and what's supposed to be the current. Yes, because the, they just kind of go together. Like, yeah, just, if you're not, if you if don't it, pay attention, uh, they do put it up at, at the end, uh, uh, they do put it up for each scene, saying like 14 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever have you, but if you're not quick enough, you miss it, and you don't know if it's you present still think day. It's, just, it's the same story as before. Yeah, I, I would just like, even like a little, I don't know, black for a couple seconds. Or smut, no, uh, but like maybe focus, the, make it a softer focus, or, or because I know they, they're digitizing the actors to make them look a little bit younger, but if you're not paying close attention, it all kind of blends together. I, I would, I don't know, just... Because that's something that um, yeah. that's something that the TV show Arrow did all the time. The last two seasons it was on, where you could not tell one thing from another. from the other, and it was so annoying. Well, I noticed it that in this episode specifically that the um, opening um, credits, the um, what what was it called, the opening opening thing? credits, yeah, <laughs> um, that that it just kind of meshed with the scene before. Um, you could tell when eventually that it was the opening credits, but you, yeah, it it, just... it's kind of there. You could go with maybe a second of black. You know, you have your opening scene and then a second of black and then opening credits. That that would be nice, but it does flow because when they do start the opening credits, the music starts. Yes. So there's a music yes. cue to let you know, but um, the flashback scenes they could be a little more identifiable as flashbacks. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're got your head down for a second or something, or if you're in the other room grabbing a cup of coffee and you're just kind of listening to it. Like, so you're able to <laughs> Which tell I'm the difference of terrible. realities. I'm terrible. That is like my worst. So I will put a TV show on and go into the kitchen and just listen to it. Um, I do that all the time with Bold and Beautiful. So all in all, 
episode number four of the card. What did you think? It was good. Um, I I like the whole series so far. It's been. Is there is there one particular character or something from episode four that? Well, I hope to see good things from that boy. He seems like a ninja. <laughs> So it might bring a little bit of that into it, which I'm excited for. Um, but that Romulan spy, um, the, the, I want to know what he is because it's, what's up with the Frankenstein? Yeah. Oh, I know that's not the character's name. I I think it's Maddox or Maddox or Morox or I don't know. It's an M name, but I can never remember it. So it's like he played Frankenstein on the other show, and that's why I keep calling him Frankenstein. Um. But yeah, I, I want to see what ends up going on with his storyline because he's not who he says he is. He is definitely not no. who he says he is. Um, but the second they brought on the warrior kid guy, I'm like, okay, so here we go. We're going to disrupt this new um, love triangle, this love relationship, romantic relationship, whatever you want to call it, that's starting between the, the professor, the Allison Pill character, and the pilot on the ship because they're kind of at each other's um, 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 throats, not really, not really, but I, uh, they do have some dialogue. It's that, that flirty yeah. kind of, I want to say Pride and Prejudice type of flirting where it's, and it's like, the second they brought the character on, I'm like, oh, okay, he's going to go on the ship and he's going to disrupt this flow that's going on. He's either going to He doesn't go, seem to be though. He seems he's either going to date her or he's going to date him. And that was one of it. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. So I could be right. I could be wrong. I could be totally, totally wrong. Because, <laughs> but as a writer, that's what I would do. I would have him disrupt the little love triangle or the love uh, pairing and, and make it a love triangle. Raised by nuns, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be more um, distance between him and Picard. That father son like, relationship. Yeah. He's going to get in with somebody. He's going to get in with somebody. You're going to tell me that after being raised by a bunch of nuns that he's not going to get in with them. <laughs> it could happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I think we pretty much covered the whole episode. Yeah, it, not really much happened in it, but like a lot did happen, but it was just little, little bits. Yeah, you didn't really uncover anything no. in this episode. It was more setting up the relationship between Picard and the warrior guy whose name I did not catch um, at all whatsoever. Eleanor? Elen Elen like, it was a, it was very feminine. It was a feminine name? Yeah. It might have been. I think it was, like, Eleanor or something like that. We'll have to, so, you know... Look it up or something. Um, okay, I'm going to say I think <laughs> my I'm still th I'm still thinking about what we watched afterwards, which was the 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 um, Trixie Mattel and Katya show. Uh, <laughs> so, but we're supposed to be talking about Picard. So um, I think it's we're gonna wrap this episode. <laughs> uh, toodles. Creeping screams. Till next time. <laughs> <laughs> I love drag queens. <laughs> <laughs>